The men's morale is low. My spells are of no use in this matter, Commander. There is more to leading men than sorcery, Avernus. I will remind them that they're wardens. Men! I won't lie to you! The situation is grim. Our forces outnumbered, our bellies empty, and our hearts are sagging. But we are wardens! Darkspawn flee when they hear our horns. Archdemons die when they taste our blades. So are we to bend knee to a mere human despot? No! I, for one, will never give up! I, for one, will never surrender just to dance on Arlen's gallows. So I propose here and now, in these hallowed halls where generations of our brethren stood vigil against darkspawn and evil, that we send a message to that fat bastard. In this sacred place, proud men, strong men, stood defiant and would rather die than submit to tyranny. <laughs> So brave, even when starving, and my great-great-grandmother stood with them. Everyone knows they were banished, but to murder them like that. King Arlen must have been a monster, but I've gabbed enough. Lead on, my friend. Don't worry, I won't be underfoot.
done. What now? Oh, let's just kill this. The door won't hold, Archivist. Almost done. The, the truth must be told. What does it matter? We're dead. Our grand rebellion so close. And to die here, a, a stillbirth. We never should have done it. Wardens aren't supposed to oppose kings and princes. Should we stand idly by? Another one. Rebellion? What's this about a rebellion? If only the book weren't burned. We can only hope. Make them pay for every inch, men! Hold 
the flank! Avanus, we need you! Nelatep Obrasov Sifan Net Vekon. Andraste's blood! What? More Avernus! Whatever it takes! Tele A Benfotos Victos! I command you, fight the king's men! Fool! So much death, suffering, and oh yes, blood! The veil is torn now. Your soul is mine, Avernus! Acolytes, retreat now! The battle is lost! Avernus! What just happened? Oh no, more fighting. Oh, let's just deal with it. Summon demons. Can't believe it. And my grandmother, she knew. I believed that my family was better than that, but answers may lay up ahead.
Step no further, Warden. This one would speak with you. This one is the Dryden, Commander, Sophia. <laughs> All these things. Grandmother? You have slain many of the demon ilk to get here. This one would propose a deal. What is one woman child compared to your might? Strike me down if my terms offend. A fool this one would be to betray the warden. This one has tasted her memories, seen her thoughts and hidden places. But she is food for this one. No more, no less. That, or she's really let herself go. My great-great-grandmother is dead. I don't know what that is. You can't be serious. There's nothing left of Commander Dryden. She's possessed. Your fledgling should mind its place. Meek, subservient, quiet. This one will answer your question. The soldier's peak traps me. This one sees so many tantalizing places in the Dryden's memories. This one would see the world herself. For me to be free, into the old mage tower you go and destroy. In return, this one seals the veil. No more demons. No more enemies. Your peak would be safe. Just let this one go into the world. The magics, all moving things, the very stone if you have the power. Something inside keeps my kind locked away. This one will roam, this one will see, this one will feed. But without me, the veil will grow weaker. More demons, more misery. You choose just one of my kind, or many. This one knows all, but will only talk after the tower lies broken. Then you are a fool! <laughs> Oh, 
can't believe my great-great-grandmother was still alive. Well, sort of alive, sort of dead. I need a drink. Step no further, Warden. This one would... This one is the... Grant? You... This one would propose... The, but she is... F what a fool this one would be to betray the Warden. La My great, great... You can't... Your f no more demons. The ma Something in... Many of the this one would propose a deal. What is one woman child compared? A fool this one would be to betray the ward. This one has but she is food. That my great great grandma. You can't be your fledgling should mind it. The soldiers peak traps me. This one's for me to be free into the old. No more demons, no more enemies. Your peak would be safe. The magics. All moving things, the very st something inside. Keep this one, but without me, you choose just one of my kind. This one knows all, but will only talk after the tower lies broken. Yeah. You only must destroy. For your purpose, there is nothing more you need. Then jump! Uh -oh. Step no further, Warden. This... You have... S this one would propose it. What it... A fool, this one. This... But she is food. That, my great great great. You can't. Your fledgling. The soul. For me to be. 
No more demons. No, the something in this. But with you choose just one of my kind. Or this one knows all. But all. Oh, yes. This one smells the sweet stench of lies upon you. You seek to betray this one. Then you are dark! The unnatural. Day 32. The subject is not responding to the stimuli. Testing the pain threshold has uncovered nothing. Only three subjects are left. Day 82. If only I could reproduce last night's extraordinary success. Electricity is only a catalyst. The blood is the key. Day 97. Energy and blood. Repeated applications have duplicated the results. I conjecture that success can be induced alchemically. But there are no more subjects left. If only I had one more, or a dozen, the things I could do.
I hear you. Don't disrupt my concentration. Even now, the demons seek to replenish their numbers. Are you to thank for this welcomed but temporary imbalance? Only just. I have only a short time left. Careful. This man has dabbled in matters forbidden by the Maker. He may look frail, but don't trust him. So the Maker told you that, did he? Short-sighted men have forbidden my research, not any god. <laughs> Enough. Why are you here? What is your intent? To what questions, I wonder? Ask. What use would storytelling serve? The tyrant Arland is long dead, as is all our noble co-conspirators and the Grand Rebellion. Sophia's corpse may walk and talk, but she, too, is no more. He ruled with fear and poison, his treachery pit noble against noble in terrible battle. We thought him a monster. We gathered allies to rebel. But the toll of years has erased our failure, hasn't it? It seemed so pressing then, but the kingdom lives on. Too many mouths to quiet. Even sorcery can only go so far. So we met with Tian Kuzland. With him on our side, we had a chance of victory. Instead, the King's Guard ambushed us. Commander Dryden and I barely escaped. Of course, to nudge people to keep our secrets safe. Sophia should have let me nudge harder. Her scruples were her undoing. Perhaps, but it was survival. For months. I prepared the summoning circles, researched the darkest depths of the Fade. That moment was a triumph of demonic law. Dozens of demons, called by my hand. But, with so many variables, I suppose, calculation errors were inevitable. Ugh. I was so close. And who draws this line of what is safe, proper, or moral? The Chantry? Corrupt, mundane, pathetic little men? You? Embrace the core tenet of the Wardens, any means necessary to win. She gave the order. I would have summoned the demons anyway. Only under Wardens can true magical research continue. A chance to rediscover the secrets of ancient Tevinter. Chantry lies told to subjugate the mages to keep them docile. My only regret is that it failed, and that I never had a chance to make Ireland pay. Yes. To stop the demonic tide, to correct the miscalculations of the past. Blood magic comes from demons. They could counter every bit of law I knew. But the dark spawn taint, that is alien to them. And it has power. The wardens use it merely to sense dark spawn, a triviality. My research has discovered so much more. Hinted at even greater heights. This knowledge could not only save Soldier's Peak, with it the Wardens could grow even more powerful. I have done what I must, but... Let me undo my greatest of mistakes. 
Let me cleanse this place. Then, then I will accept whatever justice you feel I merit. You've already read my research, but in time, with the proper materials, I could learn so much more. It was necessary. It was vital. The few meager years of life they would have spent trapped in this tower were nothing compared to the greater goal. I gave their death meaning. Yes. The Chantry foolishly forbids blood magic. But there are so many secrets to uncover. As my body decayed, I found ways to extend it. But that can only go so far. Master Mage, uh, sir, my family name has been worth less than dirt for over a century. Do you have any proof that Sophia was a hero? The boy who braved the mists. So you heeded my call. Ha <laughs> ha and you are a Dryden. The Cosmos has a sense of humor. He was but a boy when he entered the tunnels below the peak. His heart pure, his character certain. In dreams, I gave him the keys he would need. He would be my deliverance. Your great-great-grandmother was the best of us. Brave, charismatic, fiery. Utterly devoted to the fight, but still we lost. We fought against a tyrant, you know, so full of vigor then, so blind to consequence. But proof? There's none to be had. I... Uh, I had hoped. But thank you, Warden. Yes, so be it. My only request... If justice or vengeance drive you, stay your hand until the demons are dealt with. That will do for now. We must go to the Great Hall. There, I will repair the damage I caused so long ago. There will be peril. The demons will fight us every step of the way. Come. We must hurry. What now?
I have a feeling terrible things were done in here. We must hurry. We must act quickly. The demons are clawing on the gates. The veil must be closed. I will unravel the summoning circles I drew so long ago. Waves of spirits and demons may come through. Dispatch them. I will begin. First, I must summon the magical energies. I feel them. They're coming. Oh! 
My breezes form a pretty pattern. I can't believe my great great grandmother was still alive. Well, sort of. It's over. The veil is strong now. Stronger, at least. I said I'd submit to judgment. And so I shall. Can I be left to experiment in peace? With what time I have left, I will do this. It may take months or years for my research to reach fruition. When it does, I will send for you. Thank you for this, Warden. You've done it, Warden. Soldier's Peak is safe again. That old geezer of Vernus deserves the gallows, if you ask me, but people will do queer things to survive. But if he does the proper research, without the sacrifices and blood magic and all, maybe he'll turn up something good. But there was no proof to redeem my family. For so long, I was focused on the past, on answers. But I think I would have been better off had I stayed at home. Enough of that, though. I find myself at a loss. You've got a whole fortress now. I suppose I should start plying my trade again. I might use the peak as a base of operations. So many bandits about. But none would dare come here. Nice place to store trade goods. You, of course, will get a sizable discount. Looks like we're done here. A demonic invasion thwarted, a warden base safely rescued. We do good work. Once my family comes, I might have some merchandise you could buy. Might tidy the place up a bit, too. Well, I'll be
here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Well now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin after all is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? Now that you mention it, I am not entirely certain. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased, for three sovereigns, I'm told, which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way, buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder, and if you do poorly in your training, you die. Oh, I don't know about that. The crows who are actually good enough to survive come to enjoy some of the benefits. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. Gets you women. And men. Or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. And become the next mark for some up-and-coming crow? Not likely. The only way to leave is for them to think you're dead. And even then, you'd best be scarce. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. <laughs> Eventually can be a very, very long time if one plays one's cards right. Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. What would you like to discuss? Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? Now there is an interesting word, innocent. How many men do you know who can claim to be truly innocent? But if you're talking generalities such as children and relatives and bystanders and such, never on purpose, but it happens. It's unfortunate, but death comes to us all. If not me, then some wasting disease, or a fall down the stairs, or at the hands of a dark spot. It's all relative in the end. Death happens, as we like to say. And when I get paid for it, death happens more often. As far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed. The pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. It is? Perhaps you are right. I've been told from time to time that I'm a sick, sick man. Often in bed, oddly enough. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. Having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules, oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Whereas 
Yes, I am content merely doing what I happen to be good at. It's a talent that not many come by honestly. I don't see why I need not pursue it. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training, the sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. Within the crows, I did. But it has been something the crows have devoted a great deal of time to perfecting. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. I do. It is not something inherent in an assassin's skills, however, merely something complementary. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Here I am. Oh, I certainly could, but I won't. I swore to the crows that the things they taught me were to remain a secret. And while, yes, they are already angry at me, I'd rather not push things, you see. You need to learn the arts of the crows in order to slay Darkspawn, do you? You seem to be doing fine as it is. If you are truly insistent, well, let me think about it. The crows are already angry at me, yes? Who knows? Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. <coughs> It's not really a matter of wanting to go back. I cannot go. At least not yet. I hail from the glorious Antiva City, home to the Royal Palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva City. Do you come from someplace comparable? Ah, yes, of course. The wandering life of the Dalish. That truly is better. I'm jealous. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. <laughs> it may as well be. But not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in a store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a handsome Grey Warden? A man who then spares my life. I could not.
Perhaps that was a poor choice of words. Uh, true, though it is. Do you object? Uh, I'm not sure that that's the route I would take. Were I to continue old habits, but as you wish. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Something on your mind? Woof! <laughs> 